I really wanted to like these shoes. Hey everyone, welcome to Trail Sage and today we're talking about the Specialized 2FO Roost Mountain Bike Shoe and just to be clear, they do have a flat pedal version but I'm running the clipless option. But regardless, I've been testing these shoes over the last few months and it's been a roller coaster of emotions. Now previous to these shoes, I had been running the Shimano AM9s but as prices started to go up, I started looking for another option and a friend of mine recommended the 2FOs so I thought I'd give them a shot. I immediately fell in love with the design and comfort, but I slowly began to notice some serious drawbacks as I began putting the shoes through my usual battery of tests. But before we get into all my likes and dislikes, here are the specs. In a size 8.5 with cleats installed, the 2FOs weighed in at 755 grams which is fairly light for this type of shoe. The upper is constructed of a synthetic leather which is double stitched and includes perforations along the top and both sides to help with breathability. The heel and collar are padded to increase comfort and ensure good lockdown. And speaking of lockdown, the laces are robust and lay flat giving it a nice clean look. And to help keep them in place, there's an elastic loop that you can tuck them into. Like the collar and heel, the tongue is padded quite nicely and extends past the laces, eliminating any hot spots. Moving on to the sole, Specialized incorporated their Slipknot rubber compound to help with traction. The cutout for the SPD cleats offers a good range of positioning and to increase stiffness and efficiency, there's a nylon plate that extends end to end. But that stiffness doesn't come at the cost of comfort. The midsole is constructed with a cushioned EVA and the insert is plush, making walking around in the shoe easy. Finally, the shoe is offered with or without clips and comes in a variety of sizes and color options so finding one that suits your style shouldn't be a problem. But that's it for the specs so let's get into my likes. These shoes are noticeably light. Coming from the AM9s which were 160 grams heavier, this was a welcomed improvement. And because the weight is rotational, you can really feel the difference, especially on those long rides. But it's not just the lightweight that makes this shoe special, the nylon plate is very stiff maximizing the efficiency of every pedal stroke. And you might think that that rigidity might make this shoe uncomfortable to wear but it's actually quite the opposite. The padding around the collar and heel in combination with the cushion midsole makes for a comfortable fit on those short rides at your local trail or spending all day at the bike park. Lockdown was also not an issue as this shoe did a good job of molding itself to my feet. And when I had to get off the bike to check out a feature, these shoes were grippy and easy to walk in. The synthetic leather shows minimal wear and the bumper at the front does a good job of protecting your toes from any hits that you may incur while navigating your way through tech lines. All in all, the 2FOs provided the confidence, efficiency, and protection I was looking for in an Enduro style shoe. But before we get into my dislikes, I wanted to go over a few things that I noticed that weren't really bad or good, they were just things that I had to get used to, starting with the exposed laces. Coming from the AM9s which had a lace protector, it took me a while to get used to having my laces tucked and while they did do a good job of holding them in place, I did find myself having to re-tuck them from time to time. Another thing that I had to get used to was the ergonomics of the shoe. Specialized uses their body geometry footbed which has a raised arch on the inside of your foot. It felt really awkward to walk and ride on for a few weeks until I got used to it. It almost feels like there's a wad of tissues underneath your arch that pushes your foot outwards. At this point I barely noticed it but it is something that you should be aware of. By the way, before we get into my dislikes, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to all my members because without them, none of this happens. And if you're enjoying this video, why not join me on Patreon? These videos take a lot of time to create and produce and being a small time YouTuber, those membership dollars make a huge difference. Okay, so let's get into my dislikes, starting with breathability. I rode these shoes through the spring and summer months in all kinds of conditions and they hold on to the sweat and moisture like a sponge. In fact, when I put them through my breathability test, you can clearly see the tissue barely moving. And even when I put the hair dryer on high, the airflow is still insignificant. This is in stark contrast to my AM9s which, as you can see, were incredibly breathable. Two, the durability of the sole is surprisingly terrible. After only a few months of riding, I noticed large sections of rubber separating from the shoe. Now this isn't something that a little shoe glue can't fix but even with that, you can still see that I'm starting to lose chunks of rubber near the cutout. Now to be clear, this happens to most of my shoes but not after a few months. Needless to say, I was pretty disappointed. Finally, I don't know what it is about these shoes but I really struggle to get clipped in. 
At first, I thought it might be the pedals, but none of my other shoes seem to have this issue. And yes, I have tried to adjust the clip position, but there's only so much that you can move it before it affects your body position and ergonomics. But that's it for my dislikes, so let's move on to pricing, which is one of the reasons why I went with this shoe in the first place. You can find these online from $70 to $100, depending on what color you choose. Mine ended up costing $70, which was less than half of what I spent for those Shimano AM9s. But then again, these Shimano AM9s lasted twice as long before they started breaking down, so I guess you get what you pay for, right? So in conclusion, I really wanted to like these shoes. First of all, I loved the design and color options, and once they arrived, I couldn't believe how light and efficient they were. And even though I had to get used to a few nuances, I still wanted to like these shoes. I would have even put up with the clip-in issues if that was my only dislike because once you got clipped in, they felt and rode great. But the durability of the rubber and lack of breathability are an absolute deal killer for me. Which is a shame because the price is amazing. I suppose if you live in a cooler climate and you're looking for a shoe for dry weather riding, this could be a good option, but even then, if you get off your bike a lot to check out features, you'll still have to watch out for the rubber sole coming apart. For me, I'll continue to glue these shoes back together until I have the funds to buy something else. So I'm curious, do you guys have any recommendations for a good lightweight enduro shoe with clips? Let me know in the comments below. Well, that does it for this video. If you have any feedback or questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. And if you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe or join me on Patreon for some extra perks. Thanks for watching. Take it home. Woo! A nice job, Stick! <laughs>